This is probably one of the hardest questions to answer. When do you work for free? And when do you say no? Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. If you're new here, my name is Andrew and on this channel we cover everything content creation from photography, videography, you name it. And having worked with big brands like Backcountry, Hydroflask, and Fujifilm, I just love giving my thoughts and opinions and hopefully I can help you guys in your content creation journey. And it would mean a lot if you considered subscribing. Okay, so I recently got back from a family vacation with my wife's family. It was a great trip. On the way back, lo and behold, I got this DM which basically said, hey, do you wanna to go to Fiji for free? And I actually said, no. Here I am presented with this opportunity to go to Fiji for free and to shoot a bunch of content for this company. So I obviously wanna give you real life examples of situations that can kind of help you determine when you should and shouldn't work for free. But out of respect to these companies, I will just leave them private. <laughs> and I hope my experience kind of helps guide you along your path of what jobs you should take and which you should decline. So back to our story. Now, when you're first starting out with photography or videography, it's really hard to say no, because you just wanna take in absolutely everything and build this amazing portfolio, so to speak. Getting your foot in the door and setting yourself up for success down the road. So back to this company, this particular company that reached out, they are a humanitarian group that takes a bunch of people out to countries like Tanzania, Fiji, etc., where they're primarily doing service. So with that said, they happen to be a nonprofit. So I love the way that they worded their message, kind of prefacing, hey, we respect your work and we value what you do as a content creator. However, because we are a nonprofit, Profit. We don't really have the budget to pay you outside of covering expenses like travel, which basically means I wouldn't get paid outside of the experience that I'm having while going on the trip. Now, in a lot of scenarios, this would be an amazing, amazing offer. And like I mentioned before, I ended up saying no. What led to that reasoning? And, you know, again, hopefully this can help you along your creative journey. So no matter the company that's reaching out to me, I will always see it through to learn as much as I can, get all of the details before I give a response back. Now, because I was traveling home, like I mentioned, our communication was kind of spotty. And so, but to be respectful to them, since this was kind of a last minute thing, I was trying to nail down all the details that I could as quickly as I could. So upon that communication, I asked them to send me their contract and to kind of go over what they were looking for with deliverables, how much work they would be expecting, the balance between work and play. Because here's the thing, I am trading an experience for payment. So I can't decide for you what's valuable, but to me, I do love travel. Travel is amazing. I love experiencing new things, meeting new people, and seeing other cultures firsthand. I think it's rather beautiful. So this opportunity was actually really enticing to me. But you always make the smart move and establish extremely clear expectations on what their deliverables are and what they're expecting from you. So you're smart, you're gonna keep asking questions, and you're gonna figure out what they want. Upon getting the list of deliverables back, that's kind of where things started to turn. They're expecting a highlight video a day, four to six testimonial videos, a longer three to six minute summary of the entire trip. And along with those daily videos, the trip would be 11 days. So all of that totaling up to a pretty large amount of content that they're expecting back, as well as the footage. And I am not able to sell or repurpose the content for anything else, either than me posting their content on their behalf. Okay, so with this laundry list of things that they want, and it's totally fair for them to ask for whatever they'd like, you know, these expectations were established beforehand. Now, another question that I asked was, what was the balance between work and play? Because here's the thing, I am trading the experience of going, the excursions, the activities, but they are expecting footage of all of those things. So are you really enjoying it at that point? Imagine you won a free trip to Disney World and you're like, oh, cool, sick, this is amazing. Ooh, I love Disney, I'll, what, you know, whatever. <laughs> but then, little asterisk at the bottom, it says, your payment for going to Disney World is cleaning the toilets the entire time you're there. Now that changes things, doesn't it? I mean, absolutely no disrespect to this company or any other companies who are looking to work for trade. It's a very valuable thing that you can do. And if it's a good fit, it's amazing to collaborate with other creative people. And it is a mutually beneficial thing to do. If 
it's a good fit. So that whole inner dialogue that you're doing within yourself is basically balanced out by their list of deliverables and expectations and your list of what you value. And this was kind of the final nail in the coffin of why I ended up saying no. They had this little thing at the end of the contract that said, our expected turnaround time is 30 days for all of this returned content. If you don't return everything within 30 days, you have to pay us. So yeah, that just kind of made me feel a little icky. Let's say you, you go through all their deliverables, you go over what you value, they're looking good so far, but then it just doesn't pass that initial gut check. That's your final answer. So again, full respect to this company. I actually really love what they're doing. I would love to go on their trip, but if I'm going to go do humanitarian service, which I would love to, I would love to do it in the capacity as a normal human mortal being <laughs> and not a content creator who's solely focused on always using a camera, et cetera, and working through the work. Does that make sense? Okay, so when any company is reaching out to you asking for trade, what they're expecting is this long list of deliverables. But what you're sacrificing instead is actually a lot more than what it seems. You're sacrificing your time during the shoot. You're sacrificing your time after the shoot while editing. Your time engaging in that conversation is also time that you're sacrificing. It could lead to future opportunities and networking. It could be valuable portfolio content. You could be receiving an experience that you value. This block of time for said project and editing time is now blocking off and taking up the space that a different project could take. So these are all aspects to think about and juggle and balance whenever you're trying to answer the question of, is this worth it? Okay, so we've spent a lot of time with me saying, don't work for free, don't work for free. And by all means, that is not what I'm trying to say. So let me give you an example, a completely polar opposite story of how working for free ended up being the best thing I could have done professionally. Back in the day, I hiked Kilimanjaro. Woof, yes, that was rough. Holy cow, I am not much of a avid hiker, so to speak. And I was given seven days, seven days, heads up. And so doing this trip would have been absolutely bonkers. And um, yeah, I, I said yes. If you wanna hear the full story of that trip, I'll just link that up here. While I am on said trip, there's an influencer there. And we became good buds while on this trip. She knew that I wasn't actually making a ton of money while accepting that trip. She was being a good friend and actually offered me to help her shoot content that she needed for other large brands. So is that all making sense? I'm on a trip, I'm with someone else, this person needs content and is inviting me to shoot said content for them and to pay me for it because she's super sweet and very thoughtful and I really appreciated it. Said big brand I actually knew about and love and aligns really well with everything that I enjoy. I go ahead, we do the shoot, throughout the trip I get some content for her and she's like, okay, let's get you paid. And then I actually proposed this idea and I said, hey, I actually really like this brand that we shot for. How about this? Instead of you paying me out of pocket, what if you just send one email and connect me with this brand? Unsuccessful or successful, I don't care, that's not on you. I just wanna to talk to this company and see if they'd be interested in having me do something for them, even if it's for free. I just like them. And she said, yeah, that's a great idea. I'll go ahead and do that. And mwah, best thing I could have done in that situation, it actually opened a ton of doors to working with you know, this company, which led to this company, which led to this company, which led to this company. And because of that one decision that I made, it opened the door to launching my professional career into a place that I'd never ever would have been able to without working for free. So I get asked a lot, how do you work with these big, huge, enormous brands. And I'll be real, it didn't just happen. It kind of takes this recipe of things to align for those big opportunities to come. I would say a large part of that boils down to knowing when you should work for free, posting what you want to hire, and building your portfolio to match those dream clients, being super consistent in doing that, being a genuine, authentic, good person, because that actually does make a lasting impression and people will remember if they can trust you. If they can trust your work and trust who you are, people will be more than happy to connect you with the people that they know. All of that with the little cherry on top of just luck, honestly, but I totally believe you guys can work for those amazing clients. I genuinely want to help you guys on your content creation journey because I have so much that I have learned over the years working with amazing companies, learning from my mistakes, and it would be a shame if I didn't share what I've learned with you guys. So if that at all interests you, 
please consider subscribing for more content like this. I would love for this video to be pushed out to more people like you. So go ahead and leave a like below. It actually makes a difference. If you have any questions at all for me, go ahead and drop those down in the comments below. That's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.